flesh keeps silence and with fear and trembling stand under nothing worldly minded for with blessing in his hand Christ our Lord to earth descended our full homage to Christ our Lord to earth descended, our full homage to demand. Let all mortal flesh keep silent. It seems that the human race is forever at the same crossroads. Times may appear to change, but men don't. And always, just over the horizon, a, a rumbling, barely beneath the surface. Men waiting to plunder and kill and, and conquer each other afresh and anew. And the more starkly adverse the circumstances grow, the the deeper the realization comes to us of our need for a Messiah. The darker the times, the more fervent our longing for a Redeemer, for a Messiah who can deliver us from each other, and a Redeemer who can buy us back from ourselves. Yes, the melody may change, but the song is always the same. Oh, come. Oh, come, Emmanuel. Reuben, my husband, why are you so sad? Another day. It is always the same. The Philistines steal another lamb. The others come to the marketplace and steal our grain and our money. The roads echo again with the boots of the conquerors. Where will it end? When will there be peace? He will come. The Messiah will come. And he will bring peace and, and righteousness. Yes, I know he will come. But will he come in time? 
Will he come in time for this farm to be given to young Caleb as it was once given to me? And will he come in time to protect little Sarah? Will she ever run and play on the hillsides? Or will her world begin and end there in her crib? And what about you and me? Will he come before our dreams and hopes are trampled in the dust? Will he come in time? He promised, and he will come. But we need him now. I needed him today in the pasture. He was needed in the village this afternoon, and we need him here tonight to protect us from the chariots that rumble in the distance. We need him now. We need the Messiah now. He will come. He has to come. There's no other hope. And we have no other answer. And there is no other promise. The Messiah will come. The people who walk in darkness shall see a great light. A light that will shine on all those who live in the land of the shadow of death. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and thou shalt call his name Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this.
And so the promise had been made. But the centuries were to roll by, bringing with them a long succession of conquerors instead of a Messiah. Assyrians, Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, and now finally the Romans. The promise had been made so long ago, passed along, whispered in captivity, shouted in defiance, lived by, hoped for, at times almost forgotten, to be lifted up again somewhere. Now suddenly, in the fullness of time, God keeps His promise. He comes into our world. And who would have dreamed it would be into a dusty little town called Bethlehem?
When I awoke, I wondered if my dream was from the Lord, or had I just imagined things like I had done before? And though my mind was so confused by the things that filled my head, my heart could feel a settled peace with the words the angels said. shall call his name Jesus thou shalt call his name Jesus he shall save his people from their sins thou shalt call his name thou shalt call his name
So, the God who makes promises to men has come to keep them. The God who promised us He would send a Redeemer has sent His Son to us. 
This God of might and, and power has come all the way to us by becoming one of us. He became separated from God so that we, who were truly separated from God, could come home again at last. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all.
God has come to us. The God whom Isaiah saw and, and tried to name with words, he's with us. The God who is beyond our imagination, he is wonderful. The God who knows us, he is the counselor. The God who can help us, he is the mighty God. The God who is with us now, he, he's the everlasting father. The God who is working for us, he's the Prince of Peace. He has come to us to be all he's been named. And you know it's at Christmas that all the names he's been given and all those which grow out of our hopes and our dreams are, are gathered together into one name which we worship. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. But names for him are just words. Ladders of nouns and adjectives we raise to reach him with our hearts. This one who is beyond our grasp or comprehension. For when we have spoken the finest words we know, when our minds are filled with our highest thoughts, when we have dreamed our noblest dreams, he is all that we can speak and all that is yet unspoken. He is all that we can think and all that's still unthought. He's all that we can name and, and all that we leave nameless. This is the God who has come to us. He promised us that he would be a counselor, a mighty God and a prince of peace. He promised us that he With a love that would not cease Well, I tried to heal And I found his promises are true He's everything he said that he would be The finest words I know Could not begin to tell Just how much Jesus Yeah. 
Once again, this Christmas, our ritual and our worship is in a response to His coming to us. In our search for symbols and ways to recognize and adore Him, perhaps no setting is more graphic or, or speaks more eloquently of His coming to us than that of darkness and, and light. You know, Isaiah said, the people have walked in darkness and have seen a great light. And John said, and the light shined in the darkness. And Paul said, God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. For a moment, let us imagine that we are sitting in darkness. Darkness which blots out the smiles of our loved ones. Darkness which symbolizes the evils of the day in which we live. Darkness which reminds us that we must have locks and keys and policemen and fences because men still go out to rob and to kill. Darkness which enslaves our children with drugs and habits which will eventually destroy their lives. Darkness which spawns all the wickedness and evil which men so readily embrace. Darkness which reminds us that we too live in a world which desperately needs the coming of the light. Just one little flicker of light Just one small glimmer of brightness Dispelling the darkness of night But oh, what God did to the darkness With one of light Oh, what God did with its brightness when it touched just one other life Then two lights reached out with new brightness And soon there were four and then
Once again it is light. Light has come to us. We have seen one flickering candle come into our darkness and drive it away. This season, let us also rejoice in this life-giving and life-bringing proclamation that Jesus came into the darkness of our world and brought it light. Can we all pray together? Our Father, we thank you for sending the light to us when we were alone in the darkness. As surely as we have seen the light come into this dark room, Jesus came into the blackness of this world and brought light. We come again before you this Christmas asking you to come into the deep recesses of our hearts where fear has brought darkness. Bring the courage of your resplendent light. For guilt has cast its gloomy shadows Give to us the radiance of your forgiveness. Where sadness has eclipsed the light of day, shine again the sunrise of your love. Brighten our pathways. Illuminate our lives. Warm us with your presence. Guide us with your star. Call us with angelic light in the name of him who brought to us the brightness of Christmas. Jesus. Amen. Christmas is a festival of awe, a worship of the God who came. The wonderful God breathing with a startled cry in the cold night air. The counselor of the ages, knowing for this moment only his mother's breast. The mighty God carried in the crook of a carpenter's arm. The everlasting Father, only three hours old. The Prince of Peace, his kingdom in a stall. God has come into our world. Thou shalt call his name Jesus.
Jesus' name, unto us.